Hi everyone, this is Arunachalam for Sairam Academy. Today what we are going to see is a very important topic because for anything and everything we ask for evidence, whether this modality has an evidence, whether the scale has an evidence. So our pursuit for knowledge goes with evidence. So today we are going to see how to validate a research work. This is session 5 of evidence-based practice. There are a lot of basic and advanced physiotherapy modalities available now. People claim everything advanced simply because they have evolved in later stages of uh, time in the travel of physiotherapy. But are they really advanced? And what about the basics of physical therapy? Whether the basic of physiotherapy is becoming weaker or still it stands very strong and tall. That is what we are going to see. In this COVID-19 period, when you have enough time, you can self-analyze the modalities what you are using in your day-to-day uh, -day physical therapy delivery to patients and find out whether they are valid or not. A quick recap of what we have seen already. In the first session, we saw what is evidence-based practice and what are the elements of evidence-based practice. In the next session, we saw where are the research problems available, how you will come across all these problems in your practice, ed education, and normal walks of life. Then the third session, we saw how to formulate a systematic research question, which is answerable and feasible. And in the fourth session, we saw how to search for the relevant articles in the media. Now in this fifth session we are going to see how we are going to evaluate and validate these researches what we have accumulated through search engines. So we have two things levels of evidence is the one which we are going to see first. How to orderly rack all the information what you have got from the search that is what is called as levels of evidence so this is the evidence pyramid whatever information you have collected might have some research methodology adopted for finding the answer to the research question so based upon the research methodology adopted by the studies what you have collected we are going to rack them in a pyramid if you see this pyramid do not uh, relate the volume of the squares just see hierarchically which sits on top of it that is the most evident so if you see the meta-analysis and the systematic reviews sits very comfortably right on top of the pyramid followed by the randomized control trial then the cohort studies then the case control studies followed by the case series and the case reports and finally the laboratory studies and the also the expert opinion and expertise comes into play so when I give you this pyramid, this differs from different organizations and uh, different temporal variations are also available in this hierarchy. Uh, type of study has its own hierarchy. Example, if it's an interventional study, if it's a prognostic study, if it's a diagnostic study, they have different types of uh, pyramids. So it is up to you to go and search for such things and find out which is our, uh, suitable for your research question. If you see this classification which was given by Oxford Center of Evidence-Based Medicine in 2009, they have given numerical values for this, that is the levels for this. 1A represents the systematic reviews which are done using RCTs. This homogeneity means a systematic review which has taken into account only the RCTs. If it is a heterogeneous means, uh, the systematic review has taken into account RCTs, cohort studies and some other studies, uh, then it becomes heterogeneous. So 1A is for systematic reviews of homogeneity of RCT, 1B is individual RCT, one individual RCT with narrow confidence interval, that means with high validity it has been done. 1C is all or none uh, case series studies. And 2A is a systematic review with a homogeneity of cohort studies uh, taken into account. 2B is individual cohort study. And 2C is the outcome research or ecological studies which are done in a geographical limit with a temporal constraint. 3A is systematic review of case control studies. 3B is individual case control study. 
4 is case series and 5 is the expert opinion so the least is the expert opinion next is how we are going to grade these evidence so initially we saw the levels of evidence now we are going to see about the grades of evidence how we are going to rack them and give strongly recommended like we say right uh, um, this particular intervention has a very good uh, evidence uh, this intervention do not have an evidence this intervention is being disputed so all these things comes into play when the grades of evidence are being mentioned when we say an intervention or anything has strong evidence means we categorize them as a a predominance of level 1 evidence we have already seen the RCTs, the meta-analysis, the randomized control trial are all coming under level 1 evidence. Uh, a good amount of level 1 evidence studies are available with or without level 2 studies uh, supporting the recommendation. So next is moderate evidence. A single high quality randomized control trial is sufficient to say any, a tool has moderate evidence. And then a weak evidence a single level 2 study or a good good proportion of level 3 and level 4 studies are all available to say that it has a weak evidence and D is conflicting evidence so we say most of our physical therapy modalities have conflicting evidence so that is higher quality studies conducted on this topic disagree with the effectiveness of the particular intervention theoretical foundational evidences this is called E uh, the predominance of evidence comes from animal and cadaver studies so like our myofascial release and trigger releases all these we say uh, because cadaver studies are done on the fascia the triggers have been noted like that people come up with some evidence so these evidence fall under the category of E and the last and least is expert opinion best practices uh, comes up with some combination of uh, therapies that is also considered as an evidence but it is the most weakest of evidences available so to sum up if you see these grades are given based upon the levels of evidence so um, first you have to find out the level of evidence then only you can come up with grades of the evidence so what I would like to recommend you people is now start collecting the information about all the basic and advanced physiotherapy modalities which are available right now or which you are practicing right now and at the end of the analysis you will come to know which is advanced and which is basic. Thank you. Take care.